All right, we'll go ahead and get started. Um, hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today for our Lunch and Learn titled Lunch Break Workout. Um, these Lunch and Learns are brought to you by Be Well, which is a Penn State Health Human Resources Initiative designed to help employee wellness across the system. Lunch and Learns are presented quarterly, with the next one being scheduled for May, which I will discuss um, later at the end of the presentation. Before I start, we did want to let you know that these presentations are recorded. Um, this way we can upload them both to the Be Well website as well as HR's My Solutions website. So if you would like to revisit these or for a coworker, you can access them again on those sites. Additionally, if you have any questions, we encourage you to use the Q&A feature at the bottom of your screen. Um, we will answer all questions at the end of the presentation as time permits. And at this time, I would like to introduce our guest speaker, Kayla Rutt. Kayla currently works as a research project manager at Penn State College of Medicine. She went to Indiana University of Pennsylvania and graduated with a bachelor's degree in exercise science in 2014. She then graduated from the University of Pittsburgh in 2016 with her master's in exercise physiology with a focus on chronic disease. She has been part of all sides of the exercise industry. She started her career as a clinical exercise physiologist working in inpatient and outpatient cardiac rehab. She then moved to a health promotion role implementing wellness programs to companies and their employees. Now she is back on, this, on the back side of things as a research project manager where she is helping to solve the adherence problem in exercise to help prevent and prolong diagnosis of chronic disease. So welcome Kayla. Yeah, thank you. Angela, thank you, Elizabeth. Um, I'm excited to be here. Thank you for joining. Okay, so today I'm gonna talk a little bit about how important it is to just get up and move and incorporate uh, the perfect little workout throughout your busy day, um, no matter what your schedule is or time of day. Um, so I'll go through this and then we have a little bit of a presentation at the end that I do encourage participation. So we all know that exercising is important, but what some people don't know is that even just the littlest amount of physical activity is very beneficial. Whatever your choice of exercise may be, um, the chances are pretty good that you have heard of the term HIIT or high intensity interval training. But what really is HIT? So high intensity, high intensity interval training are workouts generally combined with short bursts of very intense exercise combined with periods of rest and then exercise again. Um, they can incorporate all sorts of exercise like cardio and strength. Um, and it's very important and beneficial to incorporate both cardio and strength in all of your workouts. Um, although you can have one, one workout be all cardio, one workout be strength, um, it really is, can be tailored to you. Um, so what makes HIT work is the intensity that you give when you perform the exercises. Um, you should actually try to perform all of your exercises as hard as you possibly can go for a short period of time, and then you rest for a period of time and then exercise again. Um, but if you are completely new to HIT, you don't want to go completely all out at once. You will fatigue very quickly. So you instead want to kind of try to perform um, a little bit under your maximum effort. Some examples of HIT intervals that you can perform are something similar to like a two to one ratio where you exercise and rest for a period of time. Um, you would exercise for 30 seconds, rest for 15 seconds, exercise for 30 seconds and repeat. Um, but people also do uh, a very similar ratio, like one-to-one, -one, where you exercise for a minute, rest for a minute, exercise for a minute, rest for a minute. The beauty of these workouts are they are completely customizable and they can be tailored to anyone. Okay. So there are many, many benefits of performing high-intensity interval training. I just have here listed a few, but you can burn a lot of calories. Uh, your body can end up actually burning 25 to 30% more calories when performing high intensity interval training compared to your normal 
exercise training. It also depends on how long and intense your workouts are, but HIIT usually burns the same amount of calories um, as a normal exercise program, only in the, a little amount of time. Um, high intensity interval training can also reduce uh, your, or increase your metabolism. So due to the intensity of the workouts, high intensity interval training can elevate your metabolism for hours after you exercise. And this results in additional calories being burned after you have finished exercising. Some other benefits are um, the HIIT workouts, the high intensity workouts can produce similar fat loss. Uh, to traditional exercise in a much smaller time commitment. Uh, these, this is really seen as a benefit to more of the overweight and obesity population. Another benefit that high intensity interval training does is um, also lowers your blood sugar. So HIIT can lower your blood glucose more than a traditional uh, continuous exercise program. Um, but these improvements have been, have been seen in both healthy and diabetic individuals as well. One of the main benefits that performing high intensity interval training can do is actually improve your oxygen consumption. And when we talk about oxygen consumption, it refers to your muscles ability to use oxygen. And usually um, endurance training is typically used for improvement in oxygen consumption, but it has been found that these sorts of exercises have the same benefits and again, a much shorter time frame. And lastly, it can help really reduce your uh, heart rate and blood pressure. Uh, this is primarily seen in overweight and obese individuals as well. There are a lot more benefits. Uh, these are just the major ones. So how do we know it works? There have been uh, numerous studies done on the benefits of HIT. There have been studies done comparing um, high intensity interval training to uh, normal endurance continuous training. Um, I have listed two here and uh, I really, they were really interesting. So the first one actually represents, it compares high intensity interval training to moderate, in, moderate intensity uh, continuous training. So something like uh, marathon running. Um, and it was, this study was done in individuals with chronic disease. So it actually found that high intensity interval training increased people's cardiorespiratory fitness by 19.4% um, compared to the people who did the moderate intensity continuous training. And that was only by 10.3%. So a lot of these studies actually are done in a lab um, and on a cycle ergometer, but there are uh, many studies that are that use body weights um, and that use other techniques other than a cycle ergometer. And actually I listed one below. So this study actually looked at stair sprints. Um, there's a few studies that looked at uh, doing stair sprints um, three times per session, uh, three times per day for six weeks. And actually these, these studies have found an increase in overall oxygen consumption and power as well. So just getting up and moving um, can be very, very beneficial. Again, these are just two. I did put the reference on there if you wanted to check it out, um, but there are many other studies on there comparing high intensity interval training to regular endurance training. So when we talk about high intensity interval training, what, what does it include? What, what are we talking about? So this is all these workouts can be modified based on your own fitness level or even um, individuals with medical conditions, but it can be really tailored to whatever you are looking for. You can use body weight exercises. You can use strength and uh, weight training exercises. Um, you can do cycling, walking, swimming, running. Um, even group fitness classes now are starting to incorporate um, high intensity interval training. I'm actually part of a Les Mills group and their training focus is focused solely on high intensity interval training. Um, they do their interval training in 30 minute bouts, but the range, you can range from any intervals from one minute, five minutes, 10 minutes. And then as you increase your fitness level up to 30 minutes as well. Um, they are 
completely customizable. Uh, you, you get out of it what you put in. So these are supposed to be very hard intervals, working at as hard as you almost can go and then take a break and then work again. But they don't need to be done in a gym. They can be done at home, in your office, um, at a park, outside, anywhere where you have some room and you can just get up and get moving is the best. So finding the time actually can get these can uh, can be very challenging. We hear the number one excuse for not exercising is I don't have time. Our lives are jam packed and full of activity with family, friends, hobbies, work, you name it. So we let that time factor get in the way of exercising. Um, but doing some sort of exercise is better than nothing. So you can use, for an example, um, utilizing commercial breaks while, while you're watching TV can be very effective. Um, just getting up and doing simple activities like jumping jacks, push-ups, anything to get moving at home. Um, even doing calf raises when you brush your teeth or when you're cooking on the stove, just to get your heart rate elevated is very important. If you really don't have time to get in a brief intensity workout or any workout at all, um, just to improve your fitness levels, try to get a standing desk at home now that most of us are stuck at home um, or a standing desk at work. This kind of increases your activity levels as well. Try to set reminders on your phone to tell you to get up or some people might have a watch to tell them to get up and get moving. Um, it's not good to sit for four plus hours, but an example would be to set your phone for a reminder to do every 30 minutes, get up and do 30 squats or high knees um, or every hour, do some lunges. Again, this isn't high intensity, it just keeps your heart rate up and gets you moving. Um, an example, and also if you don't have enough time, um, if you're out and about, you all have heard it before, but park in the back of the parking lot, walk to the store, um, use the stairs instead of the elevator. Any little thing to keep you active throughout the day is important. So just some tips and tricks to help you get started. Uh, like I said, the high intensity interval training really can incorporate any type of exercise, but modifications can be done to any exercise. Um, if an exercise seems too hard, that's okay. We just adjust for it. Um, for example, if you can't do a normal push-up, try to do the push-up on, um, on the wall, like have an incline or even on a stair. Um, once you become stronger uh, and find modifications are easy, then you can progress. Uh, you always want to remember to start low and then build up. You don't want to start by doing these workouts all out for 10 minutes at a time, or you don't want to do 50 squats in a row. That's how you become sore um, and you could also become hurt. So once your body is accustomed to doing these workouts, then you can start adding different movements to help you build strength, um, more weight, and so forth. You always want to remember to warm up and cool down before doing these types of high intensity intervals, you don't wanna be sitting for four hours to do a high intensity interval training for four minutes and then sit down for four hours. Uh, that is actually how you can get hurt and re remain sore after the workout. If you don't have much time to do a warm up, you can just do arm circles, walk up the stairs a few times and then get going. But if you do have the proper time, it would be very beneficial to do a two to three minute active warm up. You wanna focus on uh, quality of your actual exercises, not quantity. So making sure you perform these exercises with the best, most proper form um, is, is very important. If you focus on the quantity of things, you might lose focus um, with what the exercise is supposed to look like. You won't benefit from the exercise and again, have a higher chance to get hurt. And then lastly, if you do find some of these exercises are too easy, then you can always progress and make them harder. Uh, if you don't have any gym equipment, you can get creative. You can add jumps to your workouts. You can um, make your movements more complex. You could lift textbooks, anything at home um, to add progression or weight to your different exercises as well. Um, if you do have gym equipment, you could add resistance by dumbbells or medicine balls. That's just an example. 
So an ex a simple example of a hit high intensity interval workout would be something like I'm showing here, where you would work out at high intensity for 30 seconds, take a 15 second break, again for 30 seconds, 15 second break. Now these are just simple one exercises. To make it more uh, complex, you could just add exercises or add minutes. This in total is only three minutes and you can repeat as necessary. Um, it again is just how much you have time, how fit you are, what you wanna get out of it that you can kind of benefit from. Um, and like I said, a lot of these are, you can add weight to, you can change it up, but we're actually gonna give it a try. And like I said, we're gonna encourage people to participate um, here in a second, but we have, I have this one minute HIIT workout. And this workout that we're gonna do is pretty much focuses on lower body. Um, but again, it can be changed to doing upper body, uh, full body and mix it up. But if you repeat this, this one minute workout a couple times today, you'll have a good, a good amount of workout in for the day. Um, again, you can do it anywhere, but the exercises that we're going to do are sit to stand, and that's where you can take an office chair or a kitchen chair, and uh, you simply cross your arms, you sit in the chair, you stand up, and you return to sitting. Again, as this is as fast as we can go, um, and it might seem really easy, and it should be, but that's okay because we're just going to work on the movement and the transition of what a uh, HIIT workout actually is. If you do this continuously though, you can add weight, like I said, by holding a dumbbell or holding a textbook. Um, but some people actually might find it difficult uh, if they have bad knees. So that's perfectly fine too. If you do have bad knees, you can put uh, a textbook or a firm pillow on your chair and that actually limits the degree that you have to sit. So we'll do that for 15 seconds, take a 15 second break, and then we'll move on straight into squats. Squats are very similar obviously to the chair stand, except without the, without the chair. Um, again, if you have bad knees, just limit how, how far you go down. Our third exercise that we'll get into is lunges. Now these are a great lower body exercise. We're gonna alternate legs, um, but these exercises can actually be very uncomfortable for people with bad hips and bad knees, and that's perfectly okay. We'll add an alternative. If you cannot do lunges, um, some exercises that you could do would be glute bridges or donkey kicks. Uh, glute bridges are where you lie on your back and you place your feet on the ground with your knees up and you simply just lift your hips to the sky as quick as you can. Again, that would be a replacement for lunges. And then lastly, what we're going to do is jog in place again as quick as we can for 15 seconds. So I do encourage all participation. Um, we're gonna actually get started. And if, if you just wanna observe, that's fine too. We are just looking about how to incorporate these one minute exercises throughout your day. Okay, so we're gonna get started. Um, if you are participating, um, we're gonna do the sit to stand for 15 seconds. All right, so here we go. You wanna cross your arm and sit as quickly. Remember, try not to bounce. And we're gonna go as quickly as possible just to get that heart rate up. Great job. And then we take a break. And the next is squats. So if you do have a chair, you can move it out of the way. And again, I do encourage you just to do this throughout your day. Um, any exercise can be beneficial. So we'll do squats. You want to cross your arms and you'll go as fast as you can. For the squats, you want to make sure that your knees don't go over your toes. This is important uh, if to uh, reduce the injury. Good job. And rest. And then our next exercise is lunges. Um, I'll be stepping backwards because I don't have enough room in front of me, but it is encouraged to step forward as well. So again, for these, we will make sure our toe is, or our knee is behind our toe. 
And again, you just want to go as quickly as possible. Fifteen seconds. Good job. And the last one we'll do is jog in place. Again, as you get more fit, add more seconds, um, increase that heart rate. So for jog in place, we're just going to get our knees up and move our arms. And you can go as fast as you can. And relax. So that would actually be an example of a very short, quick HIIT workout. Again, they can be very long or very short. As long as you're working to your full capacity and doing the exercises correctly, anything is beneficial. But that is actually all I have. Um, if you have any questions or you even would like um, a customizable HIIT workout, please reach out. I have created a lot of these for my dad, for my colleagues um, in a clinical setting, anything. Um, so if you do want to get started, I'd be happy to help. Are there any questions? Great. Thank you so much, Kayla. That was great. I'm really excited to, to learn some different moves. Um, if you do have questions or comments, please feel free to put them in the chat or the Q&A box. Um, we had someone that said, I would love getting help, Kayla. So you might be getting um, some email inquiries about that. We can follow up. Um, yeah, please do. If, if, Kayla, if you're comfortable, we can send out your email for people to, to reach out. Um, but Yes, please, you can please send it out. I, uh, I, I want to help everybody. I think it is important to kind of get moving. Sure. Great. Um, we did have one question come in. What is the difference? HIT and rest-based training. So the high intensity interval training is just constant. Um, I'm not really sure what rest-based training is, to be honest. Um, I have not heard of that before. Okay. I have a question. So you, um, you listed that walking could be a mm -hmm. form of a HIT workout. Can you kind of describe how that would work? Um, like, in, in reality, you know, kind of logistically, how, how would that work? Right. So if you don't live, um, if you live in a neighborhood or a place with sidewalks, you um, could power walk for 30 seconds, stop and take a break, power walk for 30 seconds um, or longer, uh, kind of increase your speed um, when you walk, not to the point that you're running, but just increase your speed and then slow down. Um, if you live by a hill, just focus on walking up the hill, and then for your recovery, just walking back. Great. Any final comments or questions for Kayla? All right. If we just go to the next screen here. Um, yeah. oh. Oh, we have one question that just came in quick. Um, stretching before and after a workout also burns calories. Have you considered adding? Yes, definitely. You, you can certainly stretch and I do encourage it. Um, this was just to kind of make sure people get up and get moving. But if you have the proper time, please warm up and please cool down um, along with the stretching because it will help with um, your performances and more intervals as well as you kind of increase your fitness levels. Okay, great, thank you. All right, so on the next slide, we will have a um, survey link um, just for an evaluation of today's lesson or session. Um, and just ask some simple questions and, and ask for any advice on future Lunch and Learns topics that you would like to see. So um, you can go to that link right there. We'll also can send it out in a, a follow-up email as well. Um, and then the last slide we have here today just kind of talks about um, talks about our May Lunch and Learn. So this will be on financial wellness. We've um, talked to HR and they've given us some connections with some financial wellness um, advisors. And so we don't have all the dates yet um, in place, but details will be coming soon and you should be able to see the flyers, the advertisements that we do like every Lunch and Learn. Um, so with that, we just thank you all for your time today. Thank you again to Kayla. We hope, hope you learned some new information about HIT workouts and can incorporate them into your